pastor or the shepherd or the leader is to introduce the ways of Christ to the people of God. And then not just for the people is to exercise. We'll all do the best we can is to exercise. Right. And when I say it's a seasonal thing because no man is perfect. Exactly. Exactly. And so there are times we're going to still mess up, but it comes to a point of repenting and then to turn from our wicked ways. The more we come and hear the word of God, it should help us. But, you know, I've heard too often, so often, what caused people to backslide, people don't want to come to church, is because they've seen a poor example of those that's in the church. And they say, I've seen too much stuff and I heard too much stuff. And, and, and that's one of the reasons that, you know, I, you know, I might as well just go back to the world. That's a deceptive spirit from the, from the spirit of the devil. Right. It's because he wants to see people that have not been converted completely. Conversion takes time. It doesn't happen overnight. Exactly. Yeah. All right, go ahead, Andy. All right. Uh, we, we're going to start. You want to start with the verses going to John, or you want to go to the secondary? Let's go to the secondary. We follow the secular uh, writers. Secular writers also speak of regeneration. It's another quote. Um, for the Stoic, passive philosophers, is meant a return to a former state of existence. Mm -hmm. They refer to the yearly cycle of the seasons as a regeneration. You see that? The, 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 the uh, yearly cycle, the yearly cycle, everybody is not going to be enthusiastic because some things hit us and it takes it away from us. And so we get down or we go down in low spirit and then we come back up. So that's what we're talking about, seasonal. Every day ain't going to be a perfect day for you. We're going to have some low down days. We're going to have some sorrowful days. I mean, we're going to have some, some evil thoughts. Right. We're going to have some wrong thoughts. All these different things, but they shouldn't always last. Right. All right. Okay. Uh, for the biblical writers, however, regeneration means a renewal on a higher level. Yes. It is radically new. It is a radically new beginning rather than a more restoration of previous conditions. Uh -huh. This renewal involves a mighty change in the person. It is a work of the Holy Spirit, breaking the dominion of sin and implanting proper attitudes and desires. Now, that's one of the things you said. Jesus Christ did not come to deliver us from sin. He came to deliver us from the bondage of sin. Right, exactly. Because as long as we're in the flesh, we're going to have this challenge. Because uh, this, right now, uh, the word of God in Romans, the seventh chapter, lets us know that the flesh is our husband. To the, to the woman and to the man, flesh is my wife. Yes. Bishop, are you saying that that's not what it means when it says confess your sins one to another, that we have to tell everything we have done? That's right. We don't have to tell everything that we've done. Everybody can't handle everything that you've done behind closed doors. And so it is not the will of God, as we say, for us to spill our guts out. Some people wait to get drunk and spill their guts out. Right. Then it comes to a point that sometimes... Uh, even when the Holy Spirit is upon a person, they begin to expound on what they did and that they're sorrowful for it. And then you have some people that's around with negative lifestyles going to take what they heard you say and use it against you. Right, right. And so we have to be careful of exposing our past as well as our now to those that don't understand that I'm in transformation. Right, right, right. So, so basically you're saying it should be when, when it's talking about that, it's basically talking about if you are uh, speaking or giving a testimony to someone, you need to know in what situation or context that you're speaking to them with. Because some of the sinful things you could have done, you could be using that to help them, let them know that I've overcame that. I've done what you've done before. So, you know, we can get over that. Right. And, so it's not justifying. It's, it's like, okay, you know, I have something in common. Exactly. We have something exactly. in common. So I, have, I, you know, I have compassion. I'm not going to run you down because, uh, you know, I've been in some horrible situations. And so I have to understand it took time for me to come out, and so I have to be patient with you right. to come out of yours. Right. So I want to be a support to you instead of a hurt to you. Or a hindrance. Yeah. Yes. Okay. So a lot of time we miss the whole purpose of coming to the church and understanding uh, in Bible class where you have to ask questions and stuff is because it, it's not a formality. It, it, it should not be a ritualistic thing that we do, just get up and come, but we don't get anything out. And we're not saying that this is all the people. If there's some of the people 
You, you, you know, I can say if you have 10 people out of the 10 people that might grasp what is being said, you might have three or four. You're never going to have 10%. No. You're not, you're not ever going to have the whole. But it's very, very important that it depends on the individual and how bad they want to uh, get the individual uh, information is because all these things come to mind. Right. You know, uh, how do I do this? Uh, what does it take for me to do this? Right. Yes. So, question. So, the Holy Spirit can begin to work on you before you have been blessed with the gift of the Holy Spirit? No, the Word of God works on you. The Word of God works on you. Remember, faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. So, you hear the Word of God. And so, in the Word of God, it's the Holy Spirit that brings forth conviction. It brings forth conviction. I've heard for years that the Holy Ghost won't let you sin. That's not true. That's not true. The Holy Ghost is to warn us. It's to convict us. Right. It is to remind us. Right. But it doesn't keep us from doing anything. The comfort. I like to use that scripture dealing with that for my uh, oneness gospel uh, gospels that's, that that don't that don't like to say it's three to bear witness. But yeah. just right there in that scripture, the comforter. Yeah. Which, which but is the, the comforter, Ghost. which is the Holy Ghost, whom, whom the Father, Father shall send in my name, my name. shall teach you all, all things, things and bring, and bring all, all things. things. <laughs> Look what he said to whatsoever I said unto I you. Said unto so you. I want you to understand. Don't mis misquote or misinterpret what the scripture is saying. You can't teach your own self. You need somebody else to teach you. And when, when Jesus said, what I taught you, the Holy Spirit would bring it back to your remembrance. Right. Because we have a forgetful nature. Right. Yes. Someone says, thank you, because I've been told that in order to be forgiven, I'd have to tell the person every detail about what happened, even though I asked for forgiveness and repented. So they're thanking you. For that's not true. Life. And, and that's yes. what I say. You know, sometimes the old school, the whole, whole the hardcore uh, a Pentecostal or Baptist or Lutheran or whatever denomination, you have some hardcore ones that they go strict by it, but they didn't go strict by it, but they hold you strict by it. And, th and that is wrong because they're not showing any compassion. They want to know all your business, but yeah. won't tell none of theirs. Right, right. And that's deception. It shouldn't be. And people will use that. And the reason why he's saying that because people will use your information against you. Yes. They'll, they'll, they'll when they get upset, well, how are they going to talk about me? Yeah, and here they going going horn around yeah. and, you know, and different things. So I just brush them off. Yeah. The Bible said, for we have all sinned and come short of the glory of God. But we fail to realize that every man's work shall be made manifest by fire to see what sort it is. So we're going to go through some things when we consider ourselves as Christ's people or Christ-like or, or that we've been born again. The test is going to come, and what it does, it helps burn out the, the, the stupidity of our hearts and our mind that we may come to realization this is a lot more serious than I thought it would be. Yes. So we have two question, questions, Bishop. Won't God give you discernment of who you can talk to, trust? Well, the thing is, everybody, and, and this is what I want to make clear with everybody, everybody don't have the spirit of discernment. Mm -hmm. And again, there's some people you have to be taught. It's just like a child. You have to teach that child you know, if the child said, uh, somebody keep talking to me, you know, okay, who, who's talking to you? I don't know. So you have to teach that child that that is not God that's talking to you. Or either just like what happened to Samuel and then what happened to uh, 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 the, uh, the preacher, uh, the priest, when he's in, he came back and told him when he asked him three times, he called him by his name. He thought it was him. And he went back. So God called him sounding just like who his teacher was. And he said the next time he asked, he said, hear my Lord. So he didn't have the spirit of discernment that it was Christ. Somebody had to uh, 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 give you, teach you how to detect what is versus what is not. Yes. So he said, be not ignorant of Satan's advices. He said, uh, he lets us know. That we should not accept every spirit, but we should try right. to see whether it be of God. In other words, test it out according to the word of God. Exactly. exactly. And discernment, it, it also helps when you read your word, uh, uh, just to help for, for more understanding. And in banking, when, when they're dealing with money, they don't 
spend too much time on worrying about how many counterfeits is out there. Right. What they do is they send you to a school or a class where all you do is touch real authentic money. Right. So once you feel something fake, you know, it's easy for you to identify something fake. It's, it's the same thing with the word of God. As long as you get the word in you, accurate word in you from the word of God, when those things come up, it's like a form of discernment. Yeah, it, it's, it almost, yeah it's almost like this. If you've never been burnt by fire, you don't know what yeah, it feels yeah, like. Yeah. But when you get close to it, you just don't. Ooh, that's hot. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> now you can tell somebody. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yes. Next question. So does this mean the best way to exercise faith is by actually reading the word? Reading the word or asking to make sure that you're on target. You have to read and get understanding. It's because it's always who's talking, what they're talking about. And what was going on for them to say what they say? And how does this involve me? And so these are the questions and may not involve you. It may involve somebody else that you're inquisitive of getting an answer for them. So you got to ask questions to get clarity so you can go back and give them something that is real instead of assumptions. Right. And that's very dangerous. People are assuming instead of knowing. He said, know what you're talking about. Right. right. That's what Paul told Timothy. Because of the environment that he's in, he says, study to show yourself approved unto God, a workman that need not to be ashamed, but rightly dividing the word of truth. Right. And so by Paul being his teacher, even he was bound in jail. When he had questions, he wrote a letter is to get clarity. And so it's the same thing today. Your man of God or your woman of God, when it comes to questioning of the word of God, you still have to ask that individual to make sure that you're on target. Right. And that's what people want to, want to know or should want to know. Am I, am I doing the best I can is to live a life of Jesus Christ? Yeah. In other words, we can't live just like him, but he left something for us to, a target for us to hit. Right. So it's, 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 it's not an overnight thing. Right. Being born again is a process. Exactly. Because introducing... Uh, 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 introducing a child when it comes out of the mother womb, introducing that child to the world is time. It takes time because that child has to begin to grow and mature. In the body of the woman, that child only grew. Maturity didn't take place until it start, start coming out. Or either that can be controversial because he said, all right, it was mature until it came to the point to where after nine months, it was time for the baby to come out. Yeah. So you have to understand all truths are parallel. But, we, you know, we have to get clarity because some people can take what you say and use it against you mm -hmm. and then want to be uh, controversial or they want to uh, try to catch you in, 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 in some error. Right. I tell people all the time, I am going to error when it comes to the word of God. It's because it lets me know that I'm still fallible. I still can make a mistake or uh, error when it comes to where it's not false teaching, but I just said something or said or told something that was wrong. Right. And so we have to understand that. It's not the point of sitting around waiting for somebody to mess up so you can catch them and say, uh-huh. Mm -hmm. you, you know, that's as dangerous. It is very dangerous. And just to add on a little bit to the end of that, the Bible says faith without works is dead. Just meaning if you're reading what you're reading in the scriptures, if you believe it and have faith in it, now your actions should show that you are stepping out on faith. We can't just have faith sitting there and you're not doing anything. You have to actually do something. That's exercising your faith through the word of God. Right. It's almost like this coronavirus. My prayer is you got a lot of people dying. If you have not accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Doing good deeds is not good enough. I'm gonna get you there. Doing good deeds is not good enough. That's what uh, I think that's what uh, 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 Paul was talking about. In, that's what Titus was talking about in Titus uh, 1 and 3. Let's go to Titus 1 and 3 right quick. Titus 1, uh, Titus 3 and 5. Titus 3 and 5. It says, not by works of righteousness, which we have done, but according to his mercy, he saved us by the washing of regenerating and renewing of the Holy Spirit. So it let us know here uh, that it wasn't by the point that where we did somebody just good. You know, we had to do, 
it wasn't because of what we did for somebody. It's mostly how did we treat that person as a born-again believer. So a lot of people think that just because I do good deeds, I'll still make it into heaven. No, that is that is not that is not good. A lot of good people going to hell. Yeah. So you, you know, people have misconceptions because they've heard, and some people hear too much stuff and read too much stuff, and then what happened? They shut down. I don't believe nobody. That's a trap from the devil. It's a trap from the devil. But you you, you know, you don't hear too much. You you hear a lot of people, you know, you gotta be saved, you gotta be saved. Okay, that's good enough. Get saved. But after I get saved, then I need to have transformation. And the thing is about being born again, I learned this, that, that the Holy Spirit has taught me. To be born again, it takes time. That's the reason when we as preachers, as prophets, or whatever the title uh, that you get, that have gotten uh, in, in that office, you have to have the nine. It is a must that every preacher, every child of God, Possess the nine fruits of the Spirit. Love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, and temperance. It's not about your title. It's not about how much money you have. It's not about what uh, the good gift that you have. We all have to possess these nine fruits of the Spirit, not the gifts. But the nine fruits of the Spirit, which he said, where there's no law. There, there's no law. In other words, he said, there's, you know, uh, to stop you because of your title, to stop you because of, of your position. He said, these ain't got nothing, but uh, this, ain't, this don't have nothing to do with position. It's because that's what we go to church for. That's what you go to church for, is to learn how to save souls, to deliver souls, to reclaim souls, to renew souls. And so to renew somebody, you have to be patient, temperate, and also long-suffering because everybody don't come out of this situation in two or three months. Yes. Okay, so first question, we have two questions. First question is we have to have a relationship with the Word of God and the Lord but that takes time. So does the Holy is the Holy Spirit there to assist? And is there a process to develop spiritually? Okay, it does too. Now, I want you to get this in order. The Holy Spirit, you have to, that's what I said, first natural, then spiritual. He's giving you your man, a woman of God, that should teach you. And the Holy Spirit is going to bag up what they're saying according to the word. If that individual... It's falsifying the word. It's not going to line up. It's because if we're teaching it, we need to activate it. If we're teaching it, we need to activate it. We don't just activate it, teach it to you, and say, because I've been in so, so long, I don't have to do it no more. No, we have to continue to do it. It's because it says, what did God say? If you don't hear me, if you don't hear the prophet or your teacher, then he said, I won't hear you. And so this is how my job is to, as a shepherd of Landmark, is to teach the people how to be sensitive to the voice of God that comes from his word. And sometimes his voice may sound like mine because you're more familiar with my voice than you are with the voice of God. Just like he did uh, 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 Samuel with, 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 um, with, 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 uh, uh, Talking about Saul and, and no, it's with, 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 with Samuel. No, and, and, and Nathan. Uh, no, it, no, it's Samuel. Let me let me get it. My mind, my, my I got so many things going through my <laughs> mind, going through my not my mind now. But I'm going to get his name. I'm going to get his name right. Well, so with that question, yes. another person asked, "How long is that process?" That process, I, I would say that process. It depends on the individual. Exactly. It depends on Eli. That's who it was, Eli. Eli was a priest. And so he kept hearing. Let me read what it says. Let me, let me read what it says. And it came to pass, 1 Samuel 1 and 12, and it came to pass, um, no, that's, that's not the one right there. 
the 17th chapter, 1 Samuel 1, 17. Then Eli answered and said, go in peace and go to Israel and grant thy petition that thou hast asked of him. That's when Samuel's mother was asking God for a child. And she said, let thy handmaiden find grace in thy sight. So the woman went her way and did eat, and her countenance was, uh, was no more sad. And they rose up early in the morning and worshiped before the Lord and returned uh, and came to their house of Ramah. And Elkaniah knew his wife and the Lord remembered her. When he said knew his wife, in other words, they, they had relationship. And wherefore it came to pass when the time was come about uh, after Hannah had conceived that she bare a son called his name Samuel, saying, Because I have asked of him the Lord. And the man Elkaniah and all of the house went up to offer unto the Lord the yearly sacrifice in his vow. But Hannah went not up, for she uh, said unto her husband, I will not go up until the child is weaned. And then I will bring him, that he may appear before the Lord and thereby forever. And Elkaniah, her husband, said unto her, Doeth what seemeth thee good. Tarry until thou have weaned him. Only the Lord establish his word. You see that? Only the Lord established his word. So the woman abode and gave her son suck until she weaned him. And when she had weaned him, she took him up with her with three bullocks, one ephah of flour, and a bottle of wine, and brought him into the house of the Lord in Shiloh, and the child was young. And they slew the bullock and brought the child to Eli. Eli. And she said, Oh my Lord, as thy soul liveth, my Lord, I am the woman that stood by thee here praying unto the Lord. For this child I prayed, and the Lord had given me my petition. Let me go on down a little bit further. Uh, the, the second chapter. Uh, we still on the end of that second question of time. Yes, that's when uh, she brought the child, and this is when, at the point when, um, when Samuel began to, uh, all right, here it is. Now, uh, uh, second chapter, 1 Samuel 2 and 22. Now, Eli was very old and heard all that his sons did unto Israel, how the women, okay, that's not it either. Uh, I know what I want, I'm, I'm going to find it. Go ahead and ask your question. Okay, so... Uh, the second question is kind of a statement and then a question at first. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the spirit is spirit. Can you give me more insight? Okay, that which is born of the flesh is flesh. In other words, I was born of my mama, my mama and daddy. That's flesh, born of the flesh. Now, when I'm born of the spirit, it means now the spirit of Christ. In other words, the word of God has now entered into my life. I'm born of the Spirit. The change in my life came because it was my desire, and it came because that I asked God. It's just like a mother father asking for a child. And so when they get that child, so they have to take care of that child. So when we ask God to come in our life, it is now God's, it's his duty is to take care of us. And so it is our duty, duty is to hear who's taking care of us so that he can lead us in the right way. And that's the purpose of the Holy Spirit. The man of God going, when you go to church, he is supposed to lead us, or we're supposed to lead you in the right direction and teach you of a righteous thing. It doesn't mean that we're perfect. We're still subject to error. But we're doing the best we can is to help lead you into the same direction that I'm going in. Why? Because if something happens to me, this is what people have to have. If something happens to me, Life still go on. Mm -hmm. You don't die when the preacher die. When the preacher go to the grave, a lot of people go to the grave with the preacher. That shouldn't be. And then nobody else can handle them. It should not be. It comes to a point, after this individual is gone, God is gone and called him on the glory, and then the Lord leads you someplace else, or providing that you stay there. So this man of God that has took up the mantle from where he has now been brought in, he should first find out what was the vision of the church. And he should follow the vision that the man of God left. Right. He shouldn't come in and do his own thing. 
This has been misinterpreted. That's when a lot of them come in, tear down, get rid of all the old people. Somebody's going to make him or make her to, hey, you can't come in. You're not going to take all the money. We're going to introduce you to this is how the pastor did. This is how we become successful. And you don't come in because you want us to give you $15,000 a month and all this. It's, it's out of place. It's out of place. So this is why we need to know and understand the word of God for ourselves. But you're always going to need a covering. You're going to always need a covering. Okay. Uh, another question. Bishop, is it possible that the Holy Spirit can have been assisting someone from birth? Because Jesus told him that I knew you from your mother's womb. All right. And the reason Jesus told him that I knew you from your mother's womb is because, remember, he's God. And nothing is hid from him. But because he came down in the flesh, he didn't reveal everything. So he said some things is to keep other people out of God's business. And that's one of the reasons that he used parables. When you go to seminaries, uh, a lot of times seminaries don't use parables. They use hermeneutics. It's a method. And so we have to understand, we have to understand uh, that we have to know who was Hermes and what was the nudics. Hermes was a Greek god, and nudics was a method that he used as far as speaking eloquently, as far as re uh, representing or presenting whatever he had to the people. It's good of the hermeneutics, but majority of people use it is to just capture the people's uh, imagination because, you know, using big words. That's what Paul said. My speech and my teaching were not enticing words with man's wisdom. So, you know, learning and understanding hermeneutics, is, it, we need to understand the purpose of it because it can be very damaging when it's used for the only purpose of to, quote unquote, make you look good or because of prestige. And so we have to be careful. All right, 1 Samuel, the third chapter. This is where we are, third chapter in one. And the child Samuel ministered unto the Lord before Eli. And the word of the Lord was pressed in those days, and there was no open vision. And it came to pass at that time when Eli was laid down in his place, and his eyes began to wax dim that he could not see. And ere the lamp of God went out in the temple of the Lord, where the ark of God was. And Samuel was laid down to sleep. That the Lord called Samuel. See there? The Lord called Samuel. And he said, and he answered, here am I. And he ran unto Eli and said, here am I. For thou callest me. And he said, I call not, lie down again. And he went and lay down. The sixth verse says, and the Lord called yet again Samuel. See, he was young. He couldn't discern that that was the voice of God. Yeah. God sounded just like his teacher, right. Eli. That's why he ran to him. He said, and Samuel arose and went to Eli and said, here am I, for thou didst call me. And he answered, I call not my son. He said, lie down. Now, Samuel did not yet know the Lord. You see that? Yeah. You see that? Everybody just called to come to church. They don't know the Lord. Yeah. He said, now Samuel did not yet know the Lord. Remember, now he's been there with him all the time, but he still didn't know the Lord. What he, did, he didn't know the word. He didn't understand the law. He didn't understand the purpose of him being reared up. Now by Eli. Yeah. He says, neither was the word of the Lord yet revealed unto him. You see that scripture? And this is what people misinterpret. You have to read the scripture. Also in 1 Samuel 2 and 12, he said, now the sons of Eli were the sons of Belial, and they knew not the Lord. When people don't know the Lord, they can be, uh, 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 they can actually get themselves in trouble because they know not what spirit is talking to them. The eighth verse says, and the Lord calls Samuel again the third time. See, some people just run to the Lord the first time. I heard a voice and they run. You better know who that voice is. So he said, and he rose and he went to Eli and said, here am I, for thou didst call me. Now he was getting upset. He said, I know you, it's your voice. I know your voice. What did Jesus say? My sheep know my voice and a stranger they will not follow. And so 
And Eli perceived, he discerned, that the Lord had called the child. Therefore, Eli said unto Samuel, go lie down, and it shall be, if he called thee, that thou shalt say, speak, Lord, for thy servant hear. So Samuel went and lay down in his place. And the Lord came and stood and called as other times, Samuel, Samuel. Then Samuel answered, speak for thy servant here. Now see right there, the word of God just proved exactly what we were saying. Just because you might know the word doesn't mean you haven't heard it. So that you have to have understanding. And so the Bible says in 11 verse, and the Lord said unto Samuel, behold, I will do a thing in Israel at which both the ears of everyone that hear it shall tingle. Now he told him, I will do a thing in Israel. He didn't tell him tomorrow or next week. Samuel had to mature in the Lord. He had to grow. You know, people don't sit around to learn and get understanding that they may know the voice that's talking to them. You know, and answering a lot of the, the churches in the cities messed up with a lot of these good young preachers that's coming on the scene because they've been inspired by somebody or they left and they got mad and started their own ministry and then they start filling up their church by telling other people to come and help them. If God gives you something to do, you're going to start like myself and some of the others. You're going to work hard. Don't bother. You go to the lost sheep of the fold. You go to somebody that's backslid, somebody that don't want to be in the church no more. You don't recruit from where you come from. And so the, that's the reason you have to understand that when you're born again, new principles are set up. You begin to learn and understand a fresh way. Yes, ma'am. Bishop, what if the child remembers hearing the same voice since they were little and to be grown up the voice of reason or the Holy Spirit? So if they keep hearing the same voice from a child and they're grown, is it the voice of reason or is it the Holy Spirit? Well, the thing is, it's you need to talk to the individual. And, and when you begin to talk to the individual about, you know, here, here it is. He from a little child and is still talking to him and growing up, it's something wrong. It's a, it, it is something wrong. And so uh, this is why you have to investigate. And when I say investigate, you have to search it out. And a lot of things we're not going to find out divinely, so we have to question the individual. How did this start? When did it start? When did you hear? What was going on when you start hearing this voice? As reading Jesus said, my sheep know my voice. They know my voice because I spent valuable time with them. The same thing, I'm not telling you something that I heard. I'm telling you something that I know. I do the best I can is to spend as much time as needed with the people of God that they will know my voice from the devil's voice or from somebody else's voice because the word of God is going to speak what has been taught to them. All right, you can go ahead. So we're going to uh, John. St. John, the third chapter. So it talks, it talks about Nicodemus. But I want you to, I want you to go back to uh, uh, suddenly the term born again. Oh, okay. Suddenly the term born again which had been known only in a very small segment of the church, became a hot news item and started to receive national attention. Uh, the words of the bishop is, it is very important for all who have wanted a change in their lifestyle. Jesus Christ has made provisions for this to take place by telling us that we must be born again. In other words, we must be introduced to the ways of Christ's likeness. That's to be born again. A lot of people tell you, as soon as you get saved, you're born again. That's not true. That's not true. No. You have to be introduced to the ways of Christ's likeness. Bishop, we have a question. Yes. So a child can answer their call to ministry at an early age? Yes, a child can at an early age, but you have to understand. I've learned this. I've seen it happen. A child at seven, eight years old said God called him to preach. And because they have a little hum, because they're going on what they have seen, that's inspiration. That is, uh, um, that is a talent. 
not a gift. Their talent because they've seen it, and so now they're mocking what they see. And they leave these little children out, and they start early life. They get older, and then they start seeing these little young girls and seeing all this temptation before them, and then they go astray because they never lived a child's life. See, you can, you can say Samuel started out as a servant of God, but in history, it read that Samuel was not a eunuch. He had children, and his children didn't worship God. <laughs> So is it safe to say, and this is just me asking from, yes. from that same question, so a child at an early age, could it work if there's balance? If there's balance, if the parents are taking the time and teaching that child, or either said, Pastor, my child has been called to the ministry. Uh, they know that God has called them. Okay, there's some, I, and I don't want to call them techniques, but there's some principles that God has established through the man of God. That this child, okay, I want him to, you know, I want him to, you know, to follow me, to be with me in the church. And as we go, if the child's going to ask questions, and we're going to tell him, this is what you do, this is how you do it, and everything, and let him know the do's and the don'ts as he get older. And when they mature in that, then that child will always remember because they took time with him. Train up a child. Yes. See, Eli knew how to instruct, but his problem was his sons were out of order. And he was so compassionate with his sons to where he didn't correct them just like Job. Job had his children. He always prayed for them. They never prayed for themselves. And so it created a problem. All right. All right. Uh, John 3, 1 through 7. Or do you, did you want me to go down to? John 3, 1 through 7. There was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. The same came to Jesus by night. When it said Jesus, the same came to Jesus by night. He said the same came during the time of trouble. And said unto him, Rabbi, in other words, teach, uh, teacher in, 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 in the Greek. We know that thou art a teacher. We know. The Sanhedrin, all of them that was in the Sanhedrin, it was about, it was about seven of them, history said. And he says, thou art a teacher come from God. They knew that he come from God. Why? Because he was doing what he was doing not for money. He was doing it because of the souls and because he was sent is to give them a fresh start. He said, for no man can do these miracles that thou doest except God be with him. So, in other words, people were not being set free. Divine things, laying on of hands, casting out evil spirits, and people being free from the coronavirus. In other words, you know, deadly sicknesses. You know, that's one of the things when it was talking about leprosy. Leprosy was deadly. It would maim you and start parts start falling off. And here it is. Jesus wasn't afraid just to go lay hands on them and let them know that they were delivered. Now go and show yourself to the priest according to scripture. And so Jesus even abided by the lie. He said, go show the priest. Whoever your priest is, go show the priest. And he give you a bill of cleanliness. So people think what was said back then doesn't fit us today. It still works the same way. Somebody gets free, I tell you, go and talk to your pastor and let your pastor know. You know, I was at a meeting at Landmark, and I got free, and then that pastor can recognize himself because he's our witness, should be. Right. Yes. So the only way a child will know if they are called is if the parent nurtured them in that calling into adulthood? No, that parent wasn't doing it. It is the pastor. It is the shepherd, not the parent. Okay. Do does children have proper discernment? No. It takes it takes time for a child. That's when they come to mama, uh, daddy, and talk to them about certain things. And so people people have seen TV so much to where now they brush them off. Get in your bedroom. Ain't nobody in there. And they can mama, daddy. This this man is in this car. I remember. I never will forget. JJ came to the house. He came and he said, he said, Mama, Daddy. He said, what? He said, it's a man in my closet. You know, by, by nature, I'm scared. You know, the Holy Ghost wasn't there, but I, you know, I was scared. So I said, where? He said, in the closet. I said, in the closet where? He said, come on. He said, I'll show you. He, he's up in there. He be up in there talking to me. I'm like, oh, Lord. And so I said this. The natural man left. The spiritual man kicked in. Now, God, we don't believe in no necromancy. 
if it's my daddy, he ain't got no business. He dead, and the dead know not what the living is doing. So I went and got some oil. I went in that closet, and I said, whoever or whatever you are, in the name of Jesus, leave. And he never had that experience anymore. I didn't go to church just to hear what was said. I went to understand and learn. So when I face the same thing, I can do or say what the preacher has taught me. It works. And a lot of people are not act activating what has been taught to them. Right. And he's not saying that your pastor is supposed to raise your child. He's just saying in, in spiritual context, if you know or if you think that this baby has a particular calling on his life, the Bible says train up a child in the way it should go. And when he get old, he won't depart. So you are to train that child up in that area that you see he's going. And the pastor is supposed is supposed to get give validation and also guidance to that child in that area. So we'll work together. You do the natural thing. Yeah. Teach him, yes, ma'am, no, ma'am. Right. Yes, sir, no, sir. I'm sorry. Uh, responsibility. Right. My job when bringing to church, if I have to sit in the pulpit, I want you to sit up with, here with me. I want you to pay attention. You have anything? And children catch on real easy. Children catch on real easy because they're more spiritual than adults do because they're, 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 they're fresh. And they, have, they don't have a lot of worry. Yeah, they, have, they, they don't have a lot of oppression yeah. and depression exactly. and, and, you know, and certain things going exactly. on. So they're more sensitive. And demon spirits will attack the child before they attack an adult oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. because they're innocent, because they, they don't know. And here you have grown-ups. They don't know. That's the purpose you go to church. I do the best I can that God has given me is to teach on whatever God gave me to teach on. I just don't teach on one thing, one thing that is still on the four Gospels. Amen. I'll teach what God gives me to teach for his people. You come in and ask me a question about something, then I'm going to find the information. I'm going to do my research. I'm going to look up scriptures. I'm going to study it my own self. And then I'm going to present it to you because... I've been through enough in life that I can tell you something. Right. And so it's very important that uh, it is important for us to have a fresh start in life as a born again Christian. As a born again Christ-like person. It is very important. And so, uh, you, you know, we tell people all the time, when we come to church and see trouble in church, you see work. You shouldn't see, it's time for me to run. You should see, we should see work. Why? Because this is what causes us to be stable. This is what helps us to better ourselves, to get rid of animosity. If I forgive Jason for something, and somebody else have my, might have had the same spirit as Jason, Jason is free, then I have to do that individual similar to what I did to Jason. I'm not going to bypass him. I'm going to face him. I'm going to help him. But you got people now, they run. And sometimes it's good, and then sometimes it's bad for them to run. But we must understand that when I'm born again, I've been shown the ways of Christ. Now, I need to ask Christ, what is it that you would have me to do? It's not all the time to evangelize. I tell people all the time, a lot of these apostles, a lot of these prophets are out of the will of God. An evangelist, for you can evangelize, evangelize. You have to have a headquarters. You have to get permission from who your covering is. That's one thing that I understood long years about Jimmy Swagger. Jimmy Swagger, even though he was evangelist Swagger, but his church home was in Springfield, Missouri. And he always gave reference to Springfield. I mean, Everything that he did, he gave reference to it. And, and, and he gave his tithes and he gave his offerings to them because he had a covering. And so, but you have a lot of people now, a lot of these evangelists and, 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 and ones going around, they don't have no covering. They want you to give to them, but they don't give. And so we don't allow that stuff to happen. We ask, do you have a church home? So right now, while the coronavirus is going on, think about it. It's hurting the true ones. And it's crippling the false ones. It's because now they can't go around people. So now they're going to have to find some place where they can be under somebody that they can actually get some assistance and get some help. But you always have all two superior. You're going to have those that are going to wake up and those that are still going to stay asleep. 
So we're not responsible for those that don't want to wake up. We're, we're responsible for those that are conscious. Go ahead. Um, we start in this give those who desperately need transformation. Question. Yes. Question. That goes back to my original question. Can the Holy Spirit talk to or use a little child because we tend to overlook what our children are saying to us? Yes, but you got to be careful with that. You got to be you got to be careful with that. Um, it, it's because a child is innocent. That child ain't got no business laying hands on somebody that's got an incurable disease. It's because they can take upon it, and because they're young and their vital organs have not matured, it can kill them. Some people want to be over religion, but the Holy Ghost, the power of God, the anointing is going to protect them. Don't be a fool. Don't be uneducated. You know, it's the reason for people that don't use common sense as the purpose of somebody like me and like some of the others in the city, which you'll find very few that walk there in, seeking to please God. I'm not the only one. Don't get it wrong. There's more than just myself or some of the others, but one thing that I do know is that I don't want to, um, that I don't want people to think is that I'm the only one that know what I'm talking about. I'm not the only one. I'm one of the ones. But what God has given me, I know what he's given to me. I understand it. And it's not about, it's not about prestige. It's not about being number one. Yes. Nicodemus went to Jesus at night. Zoning into the word night, what in the world was really going on? Night meaning trouble. All right, the troublesome time, the troublesome time, history said it could be used in two parts. Night means that because uh, the Sanhedrin took care of a lot of things during the daytime and at the time of their break, then they could actually do it nighttime, but that was the best time to catch Jesus because he was working during the day, and then at nighttime he was at rest. And so uh, by them coming at night, but I saw the natural part of it, but God revealed it to me the spiritual part. They were troubled because of what he was doing. Remember he said, for we know that thou art teacher that come from God, for no man can do these things that thou doest except God be with him. So they were getting all the publicity, and now the publicity was being taken from them to Jesus. And they didn't like that. That's reading the fourth chapter, fourth chapter of Luke. He had to get up and make the statement that Isaiah made. The spirit of the Lord is upon me. And then he gave him the reason that he came. He said, I'm not into politics. I'm not a politician. I didn't come here to be bought. I came here to serve a will, a purpose for my father. So don't come to me thinking that you're going to use me is to profit off of me. Okay, we have another one. So is it very important for us to belong to a church or ministry so we have a shepherd to teach us the word of God? Yes, that, that's the truth. Where you can ask questions and get answers and, and, and not be irritated. You know, it, it sometimes even when I first started off, I become irritated because of questions that people would ask me. And I take it upon the point that it challenged me. And so the, uh, uh, Jesus, the word of God, the Holy Spirit took me to the word to where after Jesus had spoke, the disciples came to him and said, what do you mean by the sword when the soul will see one day? So he explained it to him. So the ministers and the elders, those that's up under the leader, has the right is to ask them, what do you mean about that sermon that you preach or that message that you preach Sunday morning or what you was teaching? Uh, what did you mean by some of the things that you said in there? We should be able to explain to them what was meant. It's because he said, cast not your pearls among swine. So a lot of times people use, the, you know, take what you said and use it as if though they said it. They, we call this spiritual pleasurism, like they're doing the same thing. So if, if Bishop Jordan said something, I would not take it as my sin. I said, this is what Bishop Jordan said. Or some other writer, this is like uh, Jason was reading a few minutes ago. Tyndale Bible uh, Dictionary says this. Webster doesn't go into spirituality, but uh, 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 Tyndale it goes into what uh, regeneration or what born again actually is, is meaning. It gives you the spiritual concept of it. Okay. All right, so we're going to, this does not come overnight. What doesn't come overnight? Being born again. Being born again. It's a process. It, it, takes, it takes time. 
And so the thing is, people want the change. But I say, this is not actually a change. When you got saved, change came. But now you're in process. And so you're in process. Now I have to make this adjustment. <laughs> and see, it's a problem. The adjustment of my attitude, the adjustment of my lifestyle, that's not something easy to be done overnight. It takes time because you've been so used to doing it this way and to do it the right way. We've been so used to doing it man's doctrine, but when Christ's doctrine come in, it's hard to make that adjustment because we said, you know what, the way I was doing it, I was comfortable. Let me, say you some, let me tell you something that God revealed to me, you that are listening. Whatever church you belong to, if you're teaching your people, you don't teach your people to come to church to be comfortable. You, cut, you teach your people is to come to church is to be free. And not only be free, but they should be at peace. See, comfortable people, stuff can come in and you don't realize that it came in and it creates problems. But if you're peaceful, you still can be alert. But if you sit so comfortable, when you get comfortable, what happens? You go to sleep. And that's what people do. They come to church, they got the big old seats, and they get comfortable. And, and, and it's not everybody, all true of parallel, and I'm not mocking nobody, but it is true. I have a, I have a chair in my house. I, I don't like getting into it, but when I get into it, I sit down in that chair, the chair is so comfortable. In a few seconds, I'll be asleep. I'll be snoring, my head be back, and nobody know where I am. I don't even know where I am, but I know one thing, I'm asleep. <laughs> And so you can get comfortable, but I can sit down in other chairs and I'll be peaceful. So there's a difference. And so we go to church for peace. And when I say peace, even in the midst of a coronavirus, I got peace. I'm not comfortable. I'm peace. I'm at peace because my trust and my faith is in God like other people. Everybody is not at peace. Yes. Question. Why does life seem harder trying to live Christ's life? Okay. Uh, that's one of the things. Trying it means that you, you need some directions. When you try to do something, but when you get instructions on how to do it, you no longer need to try. I'm trying to learn this song. All right. You're trying to keep messing up. Then you need somebody to instruct you. It's to teach you how to sing the song its proper way. And so, you know, I speak, I'm willing. You know, I'm, I, I think I can sing pretty good. Not like I want to. But at times, my, my granddaughter or some of the others, even Bill and even Jason and even my wife have to help me with words. And so, you know, it's, it's the thing. I'm so carried away with the word of God till I forget about lyrics and different things. That's why sometimes I have to have paper to put before me. But some other people, they can do that just like that. God didn't bless me with that. So I don't mock them. I just work with what God has given me to work with. But long, long as the power of God come with whatever I'm doing, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm peaceful. Come on, Bishop, with that same yes. question, how would you apply that to somebody that's a babe and new to Christ church in general? All right. Uh, that person is to, whoever it is, somebody should uh, take that person under their wing, not for controlling them, but to connect with them and say, I'm going to pick you up and bring you to class and then... You know, you might have questions, and because I've sat up under Bishop Brown or whoever long enough, this is what he's this is what he's saying. Well, I'm I want to I want to love this person, but this person you can still love that person, but don't be in love with them. It's because what it is, they're hurting you. True love hurts, but it corrects. False love it stabs you, cuts you, and walk away and leave you with no love. And so, but that's the best way is to encourage somebody. You know, when you have too many teachers, that that mess people up. That's the reason the disciples all preach the same thing and they talk the same thing. You got these young preachers, they I, I need to teach this. Why they, they tell me if you want me to teach on something, sometimes I leave on anybody have anything special that you want me to teach on? Sometimes God will open that door up. He'll open that door up. What is that you want me to teach on? I don't care what it is. I do the best I can teach on. And, and, and not with arrogancy, but let people know that sometimes I get excited, I get hyped up, and it seems like I'm being arrogant. No, no, because I know from whence I come. I know what I went through. And, and, and the thing is, I can't say and I will not say I ain't never did nobody wrong. 
I know at times I have did somebody wrong, but no longer do I intentionally seek to do anybody wrong. And so people have to get this understanding. Too many people <coughs> teaching is, is dangerous. I tell our ministers, all of them get opportunities to preach, sometimes five or six times a year, some more than others because they're mature enough. I said, but you have to understand is that you can get up and teach. And I said, now I see what Bishop Jordan was saying. I understand what he was saying now because Christ has allowed me to see what he was saying because I didn't understand that. But now I see exactly what he's saying. It's because now I'm a, I'm a partaker of it. And so when you have that kind of idea, it comes from, well, I'm going to teach you something that ain't never been taught. That person needs to sit down and get themselves in trouble. It's just like your child coming in and saying, Mama, I'm going to teach you how to run the house. I'm going to teach yeah. you a new way to run the house. You better get your own house. But that's the problem. People that want to teach, Paul said, instead of them teaching, they need to be taught. Everybody don't want to be taught because they have their own ideology, what they see, and they're hearing, listening to somebody else that's completely off track than hearing somebody that hears from God. Great deal of difference. All right, go back to... Um, we had, you was at John 3, 7, where you just said that. Right yes. So he says here in John 3 and 4, the fourth verse says, Nicodemus said unto him, How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter the second time into his mother's womb and be born? Now, when I read that years ago, this is what God said to me. He said, think about it. Nicodemus was old. His mama could have been dead. How is he going to go back after he came out and climb back up in her? There's no way. So Jesus was saying to me, once man has been, once God has made man, man cannot scoop any clay up anymore and make another man and put breath in it. You have man with technology now. They made these little components that they can put in computers and put in these robots, but it's still not breath. It's just electrical. And if God wanted to destroy it, all he had to do is let lightning come out of sight and hit it and it'd be burned up. <laughs> but when you have a breath, the breath, he breathed in man and man became a living soul. A living, self-controlled person. Somebody that he says, living choice. I can make decisions. And so we have to understand the whole purpose of it. So he said, he said Nicodemus asked Jesus. Because remember, he was based by the law. He wasn't dealing now with grace. He said, Jesus and said, listen, listen. He said, don't be distracted. Pay attention. I say unto you, I say unto you, except or uh, unless a man be born of a water, except a man be born of a water and of the spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. That messed me up. That took me up. Look what happened to Jesus with Mary. Mary had to birth Jesus in water. But he was conceived by the spirit. He was born of the water and of the spirit. Fluid. Water can also symbolize blood and spirit. That's the reason if you don't have the blood, blood, the molecules has a spirit in it because when you look at blood, blood has life in it. Mm -hmm. And if there's no life in the blood, then the blood is dead. There was life in the blood when they put it over the doorpost. Okay. And so when the death angel, the death cloud, when it comes through Egypt, it saw life over the doorpost and it said, I, it, I can't mess with him because life, the blood. And so this is what happens that people fail to realize. Except the man be born of the water and of the spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. So we actually just have to, uh, you, you know, you have to, you have to look at that. Except the man be born of the water and of the spirit before he can preach the kingdom of heaven. 
there has to be transformation. A lot of people are not transformed. They just acting like they have been, seducing people. They're mocking. You have the false preachers. You have the false teachers. You have the false apostles. You have the false bishops. You have false shepherds. You have false pastors. But true ones will give their life for the sheep. It's not about the money. It's about the will of God, what God has called me to do. Every man's work should be made manifest by fire. So he said for you to be born again. He said, that which is born of the flesh is flesh. You were born of your mama and that was it. That's all she could do. But he that's born of the spirit is spirit. So if you're born of the spirit, spirit never die. The spirit never die. When the devil made up in his mind that I'm going to kill God, I'm going to take over his kingdom. He, in other words, he said, I'm going to kill God. He said, I can't wrestle with him in time now, but I'm going to kill him to take his position. He was too stupid. This is what the Holy Spirit revealed to me. He was so stupid that if he would have killed God, he'd have killed himself. <laughs> Ain't that something? He gonna kill God to take his position. And he's the creator of everything. So if you kill him, everything else dies. God said, I can kill everything and I still live. <laughs> Isn't that something? That's the God that we want to serve. That's the reason we have to have transformation. And the enemy has come to make sure that we don't make that transformation. The adjustment in our life comes from the word of God being taught, activated, and exercised. We have to do it. People talk about it. People say, I love my pastor. I love this. I love that, but won't support. I love my church. You can love the building, but you have to love the purpose of the building. Support it. Whatever you love, you're going to support it. And that's the thing is, I love the people of God. I'm going to support it. I love God because he first loved me. I'm going to do whatever I, am, whatever I can to support him and not use everything as an excuse. People of God, it's time to stop complaining. You haven't been in church long enough. It used to be that uh, young people uh, fail to realize that the older people, when you come to the church, the hoary heads, they been through a lot of things and they can tell you something. They can give you understanding. They can tell you how to dress. You know, you, you got some that are they're overdoing it, but you have some modernized uh, 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 mothers in the church that has that use wisdom that come from God. That's the purpose of them. Everything is not given to us divinely. You know, people, well, God taught me. He, he can teach you through somebody else. Just like a person said, well, the devil taught me. Mm. All right, who did, he, who did he use? Remember Simon the sorcerer? Mm -hmm. The Bible let us know for him to know how to do what he did, he had plenty of books. He was following the instructions from the books that he got. Whoever introduced it to him told him, you need to keep on reading this and you need to keep on reading that and you keep on reading this here. And he got strong until he met up with true men of God. And he saw the Holy Spirit being manifested. Then the first thing he thought, shoot, I can make a whole lot of money out of this. <laughs> and Peter told him, say, you think that you could purchase the Holy Ghost? He said, you and what going to go to hell. And when he said that, he said, oh, I don't want to go to hell. <laughs> so people have to get to understand, it is important. Going to church, just showing up and showing out is not good. There has to be transformation. That's the reason I tell people, for harlots, whoremongers, adulterers, fornicators, the uh, lesbian, the homosexuals, God loves them. He hates the sin. Right. And we have to understand, some people are delivered, but they still have the scar. Mm -hmm. So I don't mind any of those people coming in. Uh, you know, just about everybody in the church is an ex. Right. <laughs> they done did something. Ex -something. They ex something. I used to be. And some not as worse as others. Right. But we have to understand, if God can use a rooster to crow, and give a death sentence to somebody. If he can use an ass to talk to a prophet that was on his way in the wrong direction, 
Why can't he use a servant? Me or you. But we first must be instructed in the right way. I say again, people problem is they're getting advice from the wrong people. And they're ingesting them that this gospel of Jesus Christ is phony. It ain't real. Ain't nobody living it. The devil is a lie. Amen. And the person is saying, yes. We have two questions. The first one is, how many times do you need to be regenerated? No, reju rejuvenation is regeneration. Regeneration. Regeneration <laughs> is a process every day. The Bible said we die daily. Mm -hmm. When we lay down and go to sleep, we're, we're symbolically dead. But we raise up in the morning. Every day is a, is a new day. The Bible says that we should not think about boast on tomorrow till we finish today. Because tomorrow will hold, hold itself. And tomorrow is not given to anybody. That's what the Apostle Paul said. If the Lord's will. If the Lord's will that I rise up in the morning. I'll do this and I'll do that. But we get up tomorrow, we make it. But that's speaking in faith. That's good, but then it's not good because you got a lot of people that would not acknowledge God. Tonight, when you lay down, might be your last night. Right. So we have to make, you know, we have to make sure. So we have to understand that everybody don't grasp this like some have. Some people, it takes that. I'm a slow person. I have to read a whole lot for my clarity is to come. That's reading when I was going to school. I graduated and everything, but when I went to school, I was slow, and, 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 and my phonics wasn't good, and so the teacher didn't spend, a lot of teachers don't spend time with slow people. Mm -hmm. they with the aggressive <clears throat> ones, those that are fast and catch on real good. They tell you, you got to catch up. Well, I never catch up because I'm in the bottle. I come out slow. Mm -hmm. Real catch up is not like water. Yeah. Real catch up comes out and you have to hit. Sometimes you have to hit me before I can come out. And so we have to understand these principles. These are principles. Everybody uh, is not, it's not real fast. Second question. Yes. What exactly was Jesus saying to Nicodemus <clears throat> if Jesus is the word and the Holy Spirit wasn't released until Acts? Was this prophetic in a sense or something on that line? All right. Now, if you go to, I, I think it's in Mark. Uh, Mark or Luke 1. Before Jesus, after Judas Iscariot had died, after he killed himself, Jesus breathed on them and said, Receive ye the Holy Ghost. He breathed on them. Then in Acts, he said, Go and carry till you be endowed with power from on high. Yes. <clears throat> he told them to go in and carry. Stay there till you be endowed. He said, my father, if you obey what I said, my father is going to give you power. That's what he said, the power of the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost needs power. It comes from God. The Holy Ghost don't get it by itself. So the, to the two different scenarios, was it also due to the people and their belief system? And like the first set of people, could they believed, so it happened instantaneously. Yes. And the second people, they had a little bit more to do, so it took this to happen yes. for them. Okay. Right. Yes. Okay. And I would say with, uh, uh, I would say with the Pharisee, with, with that particular passage, uh, understanding the context of Pharisees and Sadducees, I believe, because they already knew the law. Uh, if Just a little background on Pharisees. Pharisees... They were like dualistic people. They believed in the law, but they also believed in oral tradition. The Sadducees didn't. The Sadducees were Torah only, the first right. five books. Right. And they were strictly priests, so that they would have been under the temple. But then when you start hearing names like synagogues, the Pharisees had synagogues because they also taught other oral traditions. Spirits. E exactly, which, which, which was a lot of mixed mixed up. So yeah, they believe Jesus, in spirits. Jesus was directly speaking, I believe, to that. Like they already know the law. They believed in the spiritual world, but really didn't know. The Sadducees didn't believe. They didn't they didn't deal with that. They only dealt with the law and text. But Pharisees would fuse things together. So right. you, you you wouldn't really know. So God Jesus just came with a direct uh, uh a direct plore 
Right. Barely, barely. Anytime you say that, that means this listen. is a, a, a important right. fact listen, that listen. I'm about to speak. So yeah. out of anything I'm saying now, remember this. You must be born again. And for them, like, fleshly, they, they didn't understand that because they like, well, I'm hearing the law. But they, they was only knowledgeable. Exactly. They had exactly. knowledge, but they did not have spiritual yeah. sense. Yes. Two questions. First one, is speaking, uh, is speaking in tongues praying to God? <laughs> no. <laughs> that can be very controversial. Paul said, I'd rather for you to prophesy than to speak in tongues. Right. Because when you're speaking in a spiritual language, that's between you and God. Exactly. exactly. People have just learned how to some mimic a mock, and then there are those that have actually have the gift of the Holy Ghost. So speaking in tongues. Gift of tongue. And that tongue and that language, it means it's a, a, a different spiritual language instead of just a natural language. You know, a lot of times the Baptist church understood that very much. When you talk about speaking in tongues, but there was a spiritual side of that as well. That when you're speaking in tongues, that's a communication that you don't know, but it's between you and exactly. God. But your spirit making intercession exactly. for you. Exactly. I remember a rabbi, uh, Rabbi Brown. I like the way he explained it. He he said you the, the flesh can go into a prayer, but the when you go into a tongue. You you can't even consciously no. know what you're saying. Uh -uh. That's an intimate language between you and God, and it's like a deeper a, a deeper <laughs> revelation of prayer. But then you can have a communal tongue in church. That's when you would have uh, uh, an interpreter that has no dealings with the person uh, going up in tongues. That would be something that's given to the Holy Spirit if it was uh, a, a word from the Lord to a congregation. But most of the time. That's an intimate uh, speaking between you and God. It's like a deep, right. uh, a, a deep prayer between you and God. And it's not something that is learned. Yes. You don't learn yes. tongues from yes. somebody teaching you. Exactly. They got places now that you What's can go school? and be taught. Right. That is not God. Right. right. That, is, that, is, that is not God. I remember one time I was casting out demons. And casting out demons because of how I saw other people do it. I'm speaking in tongues to their demon. And while I'm speaking, the Spirit of God intervened and says, why are you doing that? They don't know my language. Because I had to, I was speaking, and in my own self, I would turn around and interpret. The devil, devil, the Lord said, come on out. <laughs> that was just my stupidity. The Holy Spirit corrected me. I haven't did it since. Because that language is only between you and God, and it comes from the soul man. Right. Soul man. Not, the flesh man. Not from the flesh man, the mentality of the flesh. Yes. Second question. So there is a rebirth that takes place spiritually, and it manifests naturally in our life because a change happens. So the fruits of the spirit produce growth. All right. To be saved, you got to understand again, is... The change. The change. The change cannot come except between you and God. Unless you want it, God won't intervene. When you want it, then God will intervene. Now to be born again, you have to be introduced to the ways of Christ by way of the spirit of Christ in the individual that's introducing you to God. The devil has never introduced anybody to God. He has ran us to God, but he has not introduced us to God. God has not introduced us to the devil. He has revealed the devil to us. What has happened, somebody else or our flesh has introduced ourselves to him. When do we know when a transformation has started or have begun in our life? Desires, blessed are they that hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. So they begin to thirst after righteousness. They want more. They want more. And then they start searching. If they if they don't get it in their own church home, they start searching. And that's one of the reasons we give our people, give God's people enough to read and to study to where they don't have to worry about going someplace else. So I give them the challenge. Every, every word that comes from God is a challenge to every man. 
So can you say that that hunger is a transformation? No, that's the beginning of a transformation. It's because remember, somebody has to teach you how. It's just like training a horse. That horse has been wild. So you have to first break that horse. And after that horse has been broken, then you begin to train that horse. And it takes time. It's time consuming. That's crazy. Roy Rogers didn't have trigger doing what he did. He was a wild horse. He caught him, spent enough after he broke him, spent a lot of time with him, nurtured him, talked to him, took care of him, and the nature of them start begin to communicate. Yeah. So it's like a it's like a uh it's like a scorpion. Like when you're a baby, everybody what they call they call uh some people have the gift or raw power, but raw power has to be molded into being able to use it at the right time. So say for instance, a, a baby scorpion is more uh, dangerous than a grown scorpion. Right. right. Because it hasn't been taught, it hasn't been taught to to only save only only stick a little bit of venom into your prey, not all of it. But it's gonna hit a prey and is and extract all this venom into this person so it's gonna kill them. That's why they say it, if you get stung by a smaller uh, uh, scorpion you know, you only got a couple seconds before you're going to die because they don't know how to regulate the poison. It's the same thing. If you don't have no one teach you how to regulate your power, you could kill somebody, not wanting to, but you could kill somebody. You know, you could stray somebody the wrong way because that power haven't been harnessed or, or put in the right direction so you can, you know, grow from that fruit or from that gift. Yeah, it's just like they tell you a young adder, venom in it, is stronger than a full-blown and because it's real potent, right? It's real potent. The other one, is, it kind of dies down. But a, a, a young one, when it hits you, it goes into your stream very quickly because it moves very fast because it's 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 young and it's strong. Amen. And so people have to realize that when you are young and strong in the Lord, you can kill somebody. Right. Yes. Last question. Okay, so the desire for God is the transformation for a babe in Christ or for anyone. Say that again. The desire is the desire for God the transformation for a baby in Christ or for anyone. It's just for anyone. Even babies can be so fatuated that they want to go to church. They want to hear a lot, a lot of babies at the church and, and landmark. They love to hear me sing. They love to hear me preach. And they love that I take time with them. It's because not just giving them candy and stuff, but I treat them with love. And then they respect the authority that God has given to them. Mm -hmm. And so we have to understand, praise the Lord, we thank God for this hour and a half that we've she had this wonderful conversation. And we will definitely, the Lord and Lady is coming next week, we'll pick it back up. Talking about one of the most, uh, 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 one uh, must first be saved and then they are introduced uh, to the fresh life by the ways of Jesus Christ. And so again, we just thank you. Don't forget, Landmark International Deliverance and Worship Center. Uh, uh, zip code is 64130. If you want to give an offering or donation, being led of the Lord, or if you don't have to be led of the Lord, it's just your desire. Uh, the number 816-354-1094. Or you can text 816-354-1094. And input, just put input the dollar amount. And again, we just praise God and thank God for each and every one. And we hope that you in, uh, uh, they got some clarity and inspiration. And we could have went a lot deeper into some things, but it's not time to go deep. We want to give it to you as fresh as we can, that with, our, with all thy getting, you're going to get an understanding. God bless you. And for my sidekick, thank God for my son. And thank God for... For my helpers, uh, you know, First Lady Brown and, and also uh, Shay Shay, my granddaughter. Thank God for my niece, Renita and Nicole. Praise the Lord. We thank God for you. But again, we thank God for each and every one. And again, be ready for us on Sunday morning. God bless you.